It's a Zach Sang show. Mm -hmm. We got Heather, we got Dan. Hi. And it's been a minute. We welcome to the studio, the new studio, Charlie Poo. Yes. To the new studio. He's a Hollister model now. Mr. Hollister oh in the my house. God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, these are new digs. This is a this is a significant upgrade. Well, yeah, right. It, <laughs> thank you. There was a, there was a bit of a couch situation last time I was here, but but it no. wasn't official. It was kind of just the couch existed, but it wasn't real. Now yeah. the couch is a focal point. You sit there. It's just yeah. the exposed brick. You have a troll. I do with purple hair. Yes, and a obviously a belly button jewel and Chucky. Mm -hmm. I got weird tchotchkes around. <laughs> Yeah. Are, are you not proud to be a Hollister model? I feel like you ignored that on purpose. I didn't even, I didn't even, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's, that, that's a little cool, you know? No? So voice notes is coming out. <laughs> <definitely. laughs> okay, let's get into it because I am really excited. How? First of all, it's been a minute, so congratulations on attention. Thank you very much. Um, I, I had absolutely no idea that attention would do um, that well. I knew it was going to do something, but honestly, I, I really didn't know it was going to do like that well. I mean, so can you take me into the construction of this song? Because it's obviously about somebody. You mean the new song? Well, I want to. Uh, I think they're connected. They but, are connected, yeah. So I want to start with you're, attention. You're the, you're the first. Congrats. You're the first guy to realize. Oh. Good job, Zach Sang. <laughs> He really cares, you know? I kind of like the one clap. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first uh, first person to realize that uh, there's there's a connection there. Yeah. What? So I have my theory as what connects them, right? Because I think they're about either one person or, you know, events that are obviously all connected or one cycle of a relationship. Right. What connects those two songs for you? How long in attention? The scenario... Um, where, you know, you saw the video for attention, right? Yeah. Where the girl was throwing glass at me. It's like it's 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 basically the what makes them together is where they took place. Um, attention took place in a hotel room, and this is basically the second conversation after things have cooled down in that hotel hmm. room. So that's all I'm gonna say. Things need to be somewhat mysterious now in music so, nowadays, right? But so okay, yeah. I mean, y you can't really say that though, right? And then express right. and tell your entire story in a song. Yeah, yeah, you can't. But you, but you don't even know. You know, you know, it's it's really all up to the listener's interpretation, isn't it? So here's my detective sleuthing, right? Um, sleuthing. Sleuthing. You know, did you, you learn that in middle school? Charlie Sleuth. Detective. <laughs> um, <laughs> So obviously, in how long? Right. I, I wanted to know, like, what, is it you cheating in the song, apologizing for cheating, or is it the girl cheating in the song? Like, is, is she the one who's the cheater? I cheated. I know. Mm. Well, because now they're connected, right? So you have a whole fight. She's but, throwing a glass at you she, because she catches she, you cheating. But she, on, she, but she cheated on me in attention. Oh. oh. So did you get back at her? You cheated because she cheated. So voice notes is coming out. This. <laughs> <laughs> so who is the girl? I mean, it has to be. Hmm? It has to be about. Somebody. My headphones just cut out as that was said. <laughs> well, I mean, it has to be about somebody. Let's be real. You've had a very public dating life over the last few months since yeah. you've been here last. I mean, <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm so glad that I get followed everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you you also initiated on Twitter. Let's be fair, Bella Thorne. You I, initiated that one. Are we talking about that? I I I, I'm, I don't I don't know. No no. Next thing. Okay. Next thing. Next thing. Voice notes. Yeah. The first time you really talked about a voice note and you shared the actual voice note uh, for the song you did with Selena was in the studio across the street. That's right. Oh wow, you guys literally just moved across the street. Yes. Yeah. It was like you were talking to I remember I was watching some interviews with you and you were like, We're changing studios is like this big thing and I thought it was like to the top of like a bit I didn't know it was like right across the street. Literally we we all moved a piece of furniture <laughs> ourselves. I will say it's ten percent more convenient to park here. So, Last time it was like a nightmare getting Well now you got valet, it's yeah. hopefully in and good. out, casual. I'm so proud of you, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. No, I'm serious, though. It sounds like I'm being sarcastic. No, like, a little bit. I was on your show, like, when you were over there and thinking you were just getting, like, started. It yeah. Seems. We was brand new in L.A. and with all these guys. I, I've been working with these guys for a minute, but it was, like, a new setting, and we're just we're trying to figure out our name and what we bring to the industry. Right. And interviews... You right. know, they happen to be one of our strong suits, I think. You know, could be crazy. Right. But yeah, you're definitely crazy. Ba back to that. you, because you have a new album coming out. I do. <laughs> you're, doing, <laughs> you're doing the album thing. Why do you, w w a lot of people are going the EP route and just kind of like scattering singles. Mm -hmm. w why do you, what is the importance of an album to you? I just, you know, why people who bought albums 15 years ago think albums are important. I love albums. I also, 
I, I miss holding a CD. I miss mm -hmm. like the, the CD actually has higher sound quality than everything that we listen to on nowadays. So you can get a portable CD player and uh, the lossless audio is like much, it's, it's much clearer. Um, that is the nerd answer. And I just, <laughs> I, I don't know, I think albums just tell a story. And, uh, you know, there's already a story between these two songs, not of uh, what everybody thinks, but you'll figure it out like when you hear the album, which is really exciting to me. Like there's, there's bits and pieces of like there's like m melodic stuff borrowed from from other songs and like you know track five versus track eight and I it, 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 it's it's cool you'll you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you hear the whole album but it's like a it's a big puzzle piece this whole thing which is super exciting to me the production on how long was sick thanks and, and you sharing that voice note yeah. it really I mean to me as a music fan in general and a fan of yours. It gave me such an idea of like how the song really comes to be and what your process is like. Like it starts with you just making noises with your mouth and nice. And you translating that. And I actually I always put the beatbox in the song too because it just like kind of pushes the rhythm even more when I'm producing the the drums out. I'm I'm not playing the drums live, but I'm sampling the drums and I'm mm -hmm. uh, you know hitting and like recording them. Um, Someone just squeaked their foot outside. It was a G sharp. <laughs> um, sorry, if I don't say it's like OCD. If I don't yeah, say it, yeah. it, I, it, if I don't let it out of my mind, I'm like okay, it's been said. I can move on with what I was saying. Okay, so I record all the individual drum parts and then I layer them. But it, you run the risk of it sounding kind of mm, 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 rigid. And okay. Calvin Harris does this too, where he will layer um, like real drum parts, like you know, play the hi hats or something, and play the real tambourine. Um, which is not hard to do, but it's in, like an important part to like, actually make the song feel real. Um, so I always put the boom in the song atop the fake drums. So maybe Got that's it. why it sounds like kind of fun. And it, you're right. I, I'd even hear the movement until you really acknowledge that. Yeah. It's the. I don't know what that rhythm is. It's just like it just feels like uh, it just makes you move. I don't know. Do you you do this all yourself, or do you have a partner? Because I know you you create kind of sporadically, and you've been on the road for a while. Yeah, you never stop performing, man. I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I um, no, I do it all myself. I'm producing this album entirely myself. Um, I write um, most of my stuff with Jay Cash, who I, I love dearly. He's like a great friend and like such a good lyricist and because i'll come in with, with cash I'll, I'll i'll have like you know you know how long has this been going on for example in the spirit of it being the song that came out today um but i'll like I'll, I'll need some help like filling in like the gaps and like really connecting the story together and he's just we just vibe the best do you give him a story or do you kind of have a song broken down and kind of laid out in your head i have the the song dummied out as I called it and you know, like, it. You know yes, sir. I, like on the on the pre-chorus the, the lyrics currently are she said boy tell me honestly and when I recorded it in my hotel room in Pensacola Florida <laughs> good old it, Pensacola good old Pensacola <laughs> shout out Pensacola I, it, we're on there they're good people they I mean, are good people they they like Trump but beyond that they're yeah, good people they're good people they got a warm beach that's too that's, that's for sure I, 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 what was I saying you're in a the, hotel room in Pensacola she, the, <laughs> the greatest beach in Florida she said boy tell me honestly it might have sounded like she didn't me honestly and he just helps me put it all together with those like rough words exactly between? i'm good for like couple sentences and like rough words and sometimes i'll nail it completely like see you again and just write the whole thing yeah. but you know what does it feel like to produce your entire album yourself stressful <laughs> <laughs> stressful it's crazy. You, there's, there's no walking into conway in hollywood or, or any other recording studio with a big food budget and be like oh he'll He'll auto tune those vocals. He'll he'll uh, comp that and put that together. It's literally all me. When I'm done recording myself at the end of the day, and I know I have to go to center staging and rehearse for a show, Jeez. if I don't go back and finish the record, no one else is gonna do it. So is this whole album though made with just your voice and the keyboard? Because I saw what you did on Rolling Stone on how you made attention. Is all kind of made the same setup? Um, yeah, honestly, and uh, I record with this microphone like it, it, th this phone has a really cool compression ratio And it makes things sound super slammed and just real like the more real things you can put in a production um, uh, You can put like effects on them like I I'm not gonna be the guy who like pulls up, you know Nexus synth number two, then you know what everybody uses that same synth and you can hear it in my song I'm always trying to look for 
weird sounds like I can tap that and like you know pitch it up and like or or uh, uh, highlight the reverb that happened after I hit it and like you know copy and paste that and side chain that and make a you know just background noise like in attention I recorded this sounds creepy, but I recorded children playing in a park. <laughs> yep, definitely sounds creepy. That sounds really, really creepy. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Recorded them, like, their their laughter, their, them running around, them pushing each the other. The pitter-patter of their small feet. The pitter- <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that you put it like that. But um, I wanted, like, a high pitch, like, uh, kind of screaming thing, but I didn't want it to be, like, a stadium. Um, uh, but I just wanted, like, that ambient noise. Better example is when you hear, like, records like Marvin Gaye. Not my song, yeah. Marvin Gaye, but, like, uh... Um, got to give it up like when you okay. have like the the party scene in the background like it just sets up vibe Yeah, it's ambient noise. It's it, ambient noise. Yeah. yeah, wait So do you just like go to the park sit on the bench for a little bit and put your microphone on? I mean I might be I just happened to be walking by a park that I was coming back from church that day That's very good that I followed up with that <laughs> <laughs> And I just happened to I was like, uh, oh these kids are making cool noises I'm just gonna you know use my phone to record them boop and uh, I just had that in my phone for like a uh, like a month, and uh, um, I already know what the caption of this <laughs> of this video is going to be. <laughs> Charlie Puth <laughs> records children. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? So uh, I went to the studio the next month, and I had the the boom 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 boom, and it sounded cool. But then I put um what I recorded at the park and the background noise, and it just I don't know. I just like, I could like see the music video. It brings it to life. It brings it to life. Yeah. Do you get lost in yourself when you're creating music alone? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it, 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 it's like it, it's it's the best thing ever because I'm not really good um, with words and I'm not really good at expressing emotion. Multiple girls have told me, um, so it's really good to like just pour my heart out into this music and just let everybody find out. But but you 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 haven't even properly communicated to the people you've been in relationships with. I don't I don't I I I've made it a pact to myself. I I I told myself I was gonna just be private from now on and I the, the relationships that I wanted to be private actually ended up being public not 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 because I wanted them to be but uh, you know because people like had ulterior motives and didn't want to actually like date me they just wanted you know to get a quick boost of attention <laughs> of TMZ yeah and, you know. that's but that, what have you learned throughout this entire process because it's been Dude, it's it, privacy is everything. Yeah, <laughs> admire your privacy. There's so many people that want to be famous, and they don't realize that you can't. You you can w w once you're at that level, you can't just go to the Grove anymore and go around like Thanksgiving time or Christmas time and see the lights or see a yeah. movie with somebody who is your friend. And people might take pictures, and like it's all up on the news. It's like it's it makes you feel weird. Like, I'm not being like this whole, like, oh, I'm, I'm rich, I'm a celebrity, poor me, blah, 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 I make music for a living. Like, I actually, I, I love my privacy, and it just makes me sad that everywhere I go nowadays, like, I, I, I literally can't go anywhere. And when I you, don't leave my house. But when you lose that, doesn't you a part... can't get it back. But, but your art suffers, no? Um, because no, the art won't suffer because... I do what I love. There are people in this world who are fans of me for my music, which is an amazing thing. And again, it's it's like it's I hate this whole poor me thing. There's so much going on in the world I that's so much more important than me complaining about. I have too many fans. I love <laughs> my fans. I love them so much and they make me um, do what I want to do. But it's not necessarily fans, right? It's the overall it's like the hype it's, about it. It's the paparazzi who have not who haven't heard one song of mine yeah. but heard that I dated blah blah, blah 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 or did this and you know said this and they're just waiting outside by my car and trying to make me crash my car so I can so so they can get a like a, a you know five hundred bucks or whatever yeah. it costs. That's it. Well yeah but yeah. When, but when you write songs like the new ones you're putting out, they're written about girls that you've cheated on, people are gonna want to know who are these songs about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword, but I can't keep it to myself. It's it. it, it I need to. I, again, I'm not good at communicating. I need to like put it into something. Um, I'm not good. If I if I was an architect, I'd be really mad and be like, make this fixture better and let's make this bathroom really really nice and let's put let, let's put a granite countertop in the kitchen. Like that's what I would do if I you know if uh, someone broke my heart, I would build a really really nice house and live in it. Um, I don't build houses. I you know build music so I just you know I, I concentrate on making the production really crispy and the kick drum hitting you in the face and the snare and I want to make people feel a confused emotion I want them to feel sad and happy at the same time it's kind of a sad again sad song but 
happy dance song. Do you want us to mimic your feeling in that moment? <laughs> um, I want someone to recall a time or um, that it might have happened to them or a friend. So, okay. When you start with production, right? Mm -hmm. Usually? I start. I don't want to put yeah, words yeah, in no, your mouth. No, no, I started with production, yeah. For the entire album and every song, or is it, or has anything started with lyrics, or a story, uh, or a situation? No, everything started. Everything started with production. Got everything. it. So it starts with production. Once I have that vibe, I record it. You know, it, uh, voice notes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have the beat in my head. I have the chords in my head. I have the, I think I have the the, the key of the song. Like that's cool. Um, and uh, and then I'm like, okay, what do I want to write about? What f what could uh. What could uh, what melody could work and like okay the melody works what lyric could work and what am I going through in my life or what is blah 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 going through or what is blah 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 going through and so you don't go through something and then instantly be like ah oh, I gotta note this because this is gonna be something you just recall no. feelings and emotions <laughs> no I don't I don't do f the f and then, and, 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 and then think to myself hmm what was oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it usually like comes like it, sometimes it happens years after too well that was one of my thoughts right like. Do you just live life for inspiration for music? Because there comes a certain point where, like, you, you you either write about yourself or you're writing about somebody else. Yeah, it's weird. I I don't know what I would do without music. I I live for people's reaction. Yeah. To music, I live for people coming up to me, um, in a way, and 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 saying like how this song has affected them. Not people. You know, Charlie. That means nothing yeah. to me. Um, if, if, if a song has touched them in a way, like I had a police officer come up to me one time and say that, I, I told you this before, like that his wife it was, you know, deployed in Afghanistan and see you again meant a lot to him. That's, that was the first time someone I didn't know at all. I instantly felt a bond and connection. And with, that's you know. the power of music. Yeah. What about the people that you're writing the songs about? Do you like their reactions? Um, I don't even see their reactions because they, if they're, if they're smart, they don't make a big <laughs> Thing of it. Thing of it. Do you want to know their reaction? Do you want them to know that this song is out there and it's about them? It depends on who it is. Sometimes I do. Yeah? But again, I'm not very good with words. <laughs> <laughs> Just what if, music. What if somebody wrote a song about you? What if someone wrote a song about me? I think somebody has. Would you um, want to know? I, I heard a song one time, and I'm really, really not going to say what the song is, but I heard a song one time that very well could have been about me. My, you know, I guess may, maybe it's my ego or something like that. But the, the first thing I thought of, like, wow, this is a really well-written song. <laughs> it's a really, <laughs> it's kind of mean, but it's it's really, like, the production's really snappy. It's, yeah. it's a fantastic melody. If someone wrote a diss track about me, uh, I would I would concentrate on the production first and foremost, because I would just listen to it how I listen to to music and you know when I heard Taylor Swift's song look what you made me do I didn't really even listen to the lyrics I heard the Jack Antonoff production so you listen for melody first melody first and then I after the fifth listen I'm like oh okay that's what he or she is saying so what do you think about people who write songs about other people and then say that the songs about them that wait say that again <laughs> somebody writes a song say about you okay and then they actually say that the song is about you how would that make you feel I don't think that's ever happened in public before well is that a ceramic banana? Yeah. With a happy face on top of it? Yeah. You do have a lot of shoskis right here. Yeah. I don't think this ever happened, Zach saying. Well, it happened the other day. But to whom? Allie so Simpson was here, and she wrote a new song. It's called Material Boy. I haven't heard it, no. She said you were influ you were one of the influences for it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Could I don't know. I'm just sharing. I'm the messenger. Don't shoot me, please. Are you serious? Is yeah. that is it a good song? I mean, I don't. To be honest, I didn't really give it too hard of a listen. She probably said that uh, musically because she's <laughs> uh, right. I mean, does she I don't. I don't, I mean, I don't know. know. So what happened you, you was know. we there's this new song coming out called Material Boy, and she said it was inspired by two people. And then we talked about this one guy, Conrad. Mm -hmm. and Conrad then Sewell. She was out in our hallway signing our wall and she pointed to your name and I was like, Charlie, he's coming in in a few days. She's like, oh yeah, he was the other person who inspired this song. Really? I mean, oh, okay, well maybe, 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 uh, I, I need to, I, I, I You should know. listen. I don't know. I haven't really, I, I would tell you if it was a bad song or a good song, I mean, she explained it. She was about, you know, arm candy and. I've heard her voice before. She's a really good voice. Okay. And she, well, I mean, how could she not? Have you she even met like, her? 
Yes. I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, if the song's written about Charlie, then I'm assuming they've met. What's the, what is what is that smile? Well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I've never really, I've never shared news like this with somebody. That's very interesting. It's like telling somebody that they're having a baby, but it's, you know, worse. Like, Listen, not if I can inspire people to make a song, that really makes me happy. Honest to God. I mean that with no sarcasm. Even either. if it's... You know, a negative Even song? if it's negative, if it's a song, someone's going to interpret it in a different way. Mm-hmm. Someone in Georgia will hear it on their way to school, and that's just You're one right. example. Mm-hmm. So it can be a mean song. It can be a great song. It can whatever. It can, as long as it's a song. It's in the ears of the beholder. As long as there's music in this world. This world is so crazy and f***ed up. What trend right? do you hate in music right now? What do I what now? What trend do you hate in music? Because I know you listen and you tear it apart. I... <laughs> You can I, an, you don't analyze all. You don't tear it apart, but you 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 analyze it, right? I, I really do analyze it too much sometimes. Yeah. Um. That's that's a critique I will give myself. Sometimes I just need to like need to like let the shoulders down, just like listen to a song. But I'm very done with the. Oh. Like that. Uh, that that's why when I made attention, I mm-hmm. it sounds like it's going somewhere and like a big explosion, and then it just drops completely. I really do like the ta- the, the, the uh, Taylor Swift song too because it kind of does the same thing and. Um, it's the, the anti-drop. The, it, the anti-drop? That's good. Don't these music voices in your head drive you crazy? They do. They, they, they do. And it's like, uh, but, but I, like just with the, uh, the sneaker squeaking <laughs> right yeah. there, if I don't say it out loud, I think I have like OCD or something. I'm, I very well might have OCD. If I don't say it, then it just stays in my mind. It's like when I say it, that was a G sharp. I don't do it to like, oh, Charlie is perfect pitch. Oh my God, he's so talented. <laughs> I, 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 I say it to get it out of my mind so I can concentrate on what Zach is going to say to me next or what you guys are going to say to me next. Like, I feel like you being in a kitchen at like a dinner party would be like your worst nightmare because there's so many forks and pans and pots. <laughs> All I do, I just go to the bathroom and, you know. Kind of sit alone? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, maybe wash my hands a lot that night. <laughs> 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 How do you enjoy music? Um, I enjoy music from like when I hear like uh, what's, what's like an epic record like All By Myself by Celine Dion oh, mm-hmm. like an insane David Foster production with big strings and mm-hmm. boom 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 I or, or How Do I Breathe by uh um, uh, is it Leanne Rhymes? Yeah. yeah How do yeah. I breathe without you? Like a yeah. great Diane Warren record, or um, a big Max Martin production. I always focus on for what, what puts me at ease is the chord changes and like the actual music. Because mm-hmm. if I listen to the lyrics um, as well, it's like it's brain overload because I'm literally breaking down everything. Every time I hear a song, I'm breaking down all the uh, all the stems and all the uh, uh, all the stuff. Your ears and your brain is so fascinating. It really is. I mean, I remember you telling a story <laughs> here uh, about you being at church which you went to church yeah you, you go yeah well not recently but i do did you go home when you were in jersey i did yeah that's nice holy cross <laughs> what is that like you go to church is that where you went to school right yeah you go to church there and uh I don't know. I just I grew up listening to all the same hymns and church stuff at the same time. So that's probably why I have perfect pitch. Well, I just heard repetition, all the same stuff. Were you able to play the songs one time when somebody wasn't there? Yeah, I played the an hour's worth of music. <laughs> just but I heard I had been hearing it for two years yeah. straight. So <laughs> of course he knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Voice notes. Voice notes. How many songs on the album? Thirteen. Okay. Nice, nice yes, number. Thirteen. Any, it's a good number. Any mm-hmm. features? Collaborations? Secrets? Secrets. Ugh. I always said secrets. Well, maybe you can explain why on the album cover one key is red. <gasps> yes. Um, so attention, uh, the single artwork is red. You'll know when you hear the album. Um, it's It has to do with someone who was a big inspiration on the album. And like attention is red. The font of that was red. Uh, there's a theme of red. What in, type in of album. inspiration? Good inspiration or songwriting inspiration, like how that person writes their music. Oh, yeah. So, like, you, like structurally, how you r- create a song. That and um, how just what you know, like artistry. Like my my first album, it was kind of like a collection of songs of me. Like, who the hell am I? Like, where's one call away? Here's Marvin Gaye. Here's yeah. we don't talk anymore. Here's Suffer. Here's like all these songs that don't really collide into each other, and. Um, I don't know. I've always just looked up to this like one person who, um, and it's not anyone like in particular. It's just like a someone I look up to, like oh, like how, another artist. Yeah, oh, like okay. how how they've like modeled their artist career and like have just worn so many hats, but it's just been so it's just been so like seamless, you know. Well, you, you want to? I want to know who it is. Well, I think I, I figured it out. Who do you <laughs> think it is? Well, you keep bringing up Taylor Swift. She has this whole know, red but... thing, and it's a red key. 
them, you know, in in theory, that would make sense, but it's not. Okay. I want. Do you talk to this person? Yeah. Is it Adam Levine? You guys work out all the time. I love Adam Levine. I actually was just talking to him. What I a might, friendship. I might, I might jump on his treadmill. <laughs> yeah, is that his treadmill, or do you just work at the same gym? No, that's his gym. It's so great. I don't have to pay for a gym. I just use the sauna and his his, his little workout. You little just workout. got like a pass, like a monthly. Well, he's my best friend. I, you know, I love that guy. Monthly membership to the gym of Adam Levine. We both talk about how we have high voices. <laughs> I wrote a song on his new album. Nice. It's called Lips on You. And, and for him only. Um, for Maroon Five. Got it. Mm-hmm. So, are, are you doing that often? Or are you doing it when the time is right and when the song is right? Yeah, um, I'm always writing records for myself, and if they just feel two percent not for me, like someone else could, you know, do a like Jason Derulo or um, uh, Liam Payne or Nile or anybody could do like a better job than me, and I, I, I can tell if it's if it's not a hundred percent for me. What is the criteria? How do you know? <sighs> I, I can't explain it. It's just it, it, it really boils down to if like like if it sounds like a big dance record, mm-hmm. I can't dance for shit. I don't know, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> at all. I, I couldn't tell. At all. I am I'm thinking about when I'm on stage, I'm trying not to think about all the you know, the musicians and what they're playing, if they mess up or not. Like so I'm like very stoic on stage. But I move a little bit. But if it's a really big dance song and it sounds like a Charlie Puth song, but for someone who can dance, I you know, for Chris Brown or something, or um, you know, those those new guys pretty much it, who are awesome. Has there been a song that you sent out into the universe or sent to an artist that ended up not making it and you were like, I don't get it? Oh my gosh. Um da, 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 da. I think I've sent I've sent songs to well, I've sent songs to like Adele, but I mean it's Adele. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't. It, it's Adele. Actually, I know Adele. She's very, very sweet. I want to write a song with her one day. Adele's on the list. Anybody Balls. else on the list? Sam Smith. Nice. He is. He's a sweetheart. <sighs> very, very talented. And th- yeah, I'm so excited for that album. I'm so excited for. I wish I could sing like that. He's so effortless when he just gets up on stage and he's just like belts the notes out. Like I'm not. He's not even straining. It's so. Yeah. He's such. You a just talent. feel it. It's like. Hits you, but same, yeah. same thing with Adele, right? Yeah. She can make the stable Center feel like your living room, like you know, in a way that n- not many f- performers can. Like, she has, she and he both have to pour their hearts out into some chords and melody, and that's how that's their outlet. They yeah. can't just for Adele and Sam Smith. It's not just about like calling a friend and telling them about it. They have to like put they have to put something atop it, and that's a chord and a melody, and you know. Who has a Jeff Basker is producing and you know like a production on it. But they're also pouring their heart out every single day when they're on tour and like you can tell I mean, it's, yeah. it's a different performance style. Do you do you see yours like when you're on the road and like I said before like dude I'm following you always always on the road always performing. Always yeah. follow. Me. Not always, but <laughs> always I'm in the loop and forever. Mm-hmm. In the loop. Is Thank there a, you, is there a part where like it gets robotic for you? Like you feel like you're just going through the motions? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't do well on like promo tours. I gotta be honest. I admire all the radio stations for changing my life, and you know, for for you guys playing my record, and like you know, for everyone playing my record. But I don't know. I think it has to do with my personality. I take in a lot of people, and I hate when people say this, but like I take in a lot of people's. I'm not saying hate anymore. I'm, I, I take that back. I strongly dislike when people use the word energy, but I have to say it. I, I take in a lot of people's energy, and if someone's nervous to interview me, I you just, feel it. I take everything in. If so, if I'm on a plane and there's like it's raining, but it's perfectly safe, and and someone, the lady next to me is kind of nervous, I will get 100 percent nervous, even if I'm not nervous at all getting on the plane isn't that a sign of a really great songwriter conversation we were having with sam smith right being empathetic sam wrote a majority of his album only four songs on the album were about him everything else mm. is about other people right so it's that that your ability to kind of take yourself out of your own shoes yeah and kind of take on the energy and the burden of somebody else i guess high empathy people are good songwriters now that i think about it hmm. I, I do have a lot of empathy for people See? sometimes too much though it's exhausting and it's when it becomes yeah too- well, it's when you have empathy that's too much for people who are toxic for you. Right. Then it becomes a problem because then you can't sleep, see clearly. Yeah. That may have, you know, I may have been surrounding myself with a lot of people like that a couple of years ago, but I've learned to not do that. And that's what this kind of album is about. Like the transition from that to where I am now. There's a good answer for you. And that's what <laughs> that the was album perfect. is about. Moral of the it. story. <laughs> yeah. There does, you go. does it amaze you how far you've come? Um, yes. 
I feel like if I said no. I mean, <laughs> no, I know. I knew I was. What, what if I said no? It's like, yeah, I always knew. <laughs> it is. You you might have always known, but it's still pretty <laughs> crazy. You like, know what? You know what is crazy? I, I there's a there's a slight arrogance in me that kind of knew, like that. that I didn't know that I would be this popular, yeah. but I. I knew that I wasn't going to be in real estate. I'll put yeah. it that way. I, I, I always knew that I was going Music to be Music was it. Yeah. I think yeah. most artists think that, though. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, they have to, or else they wouldn't go that far. They wouldn't even try. Again, we're pouring our hearts out. Yeah. Like, a, well, like a big can of paint. Exactly. But also, you know, like, there's some artists that I'm sure that got <laughs> discouraged at one point that gave up. That could have been amazing. But it's the ones that end mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. being consistent and pursuing and... You just have to Keep be like, going. You have to be like ten percent different. Just do something that like people aren't doing. I guess that's my eyebrow. No one has my eyebrow. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. That's, that's it. You still getting questions about the eyebrow? Jeez. I'm, geez, I just hit the. I'm, you almost <laughs> kicked the microphone into your chest. You almost like punch yourself in the throat. Yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> that's oh, punch yourself in the throat. Yeah, I don't know. I, I felt that pain. Yeah, that sucked. Mm. Um, sorry. What? What were we talking about? I forget. Hey, what? Honest. Whatever happened with American Idol? Um, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, it could have been a really good opportunity, but I mean, you got a lot of other stuff going on. You know, there's, <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it. Um, it's, <laughs> there, you know, a lot, a lot is going on in my life and yeah. they picked an amazing, uh, group of judges mm-hmm. and I just, you know, it just, this time, the time schedule just didn't, it just didn't make sense for me. And, it- you're also, you have many, many years left. Many, 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 many years. Yeah, I have a great relationship with everybody at Fremantle. They're the, the sweetest people ever. It's just where I, it's just, you know, where where I'm at right now, it just didn't make 100% sense um, with the schedule and the traveling and everything. I, I don't want what happened to me on tour last year where I almost died to happen again just from too much traveling. I remember seeing you after that. You were sick. It was, right? Um, yeah, I, I literally almost died. You saw that picture of me when I was in the hospital, like getting in, they said my immune system had decreased so much that I, apparently I just wasn't taking my, care of myself very well. But you get, it's because you tour and you also make music at the same time. So it's easy to get lost in it. Yeah. Y- yourself comes like last on the list of priorities. Part of me wants to do everything and you know, it's hard to, you know, pass on a great opportunity like yeah. what you mentioned before and you know it, it is upsetting but like I'm you know I'm only human there's only yeah. so much that I can do do you think that these shows though are becoming more about the judges than the actual singers I think I, th- I think people want to know, genuinely know about the judges I think there's like a nice balance I mean people like my friend Adam people want to know his opinion mm-hmm. on what he thinks of uh, you know someone performing and um, what is it? Jennifer Hudson's on the show now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they they want they're established established fantastic musicians in their own right, and people want to know what they think about it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, there, there, what I have noticed is that there hasn't been uh, someone who's broken on that on, on yeah on, no. that, sh- on that show. It's like an artist where mm-hmm. since you know, Kelly Clarkson really Kelly Clarkson. Uh, what David Carrie. Cook and Carrie like yeah. Ruben stuttered Ruben stuttered your favorite <laughs> come on <laughs> love I love him I love flying without wings Kelly Pickler Kelly Pickler Fantasia Barino <laughs> the best yeah Sanjaya remember Sanjaya <laughs> yeah with the hair <laughs> Justin okay. Guarini he was on Survivor. Justin Guarini season one <laughs> <laughs> he does a Dr Pepper commercial he's not out he's not out of the game see they're all doing something yeah. <laughs> I, I want. I had one question for you, but I'm going to save it for the next time because I do. This is like y- your two albums in right now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, you, you would consider Voice Notes to be your sophomore album. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you had an EP before the last one. I had the EP, but that was a. Actually, I produced that whole EP. Nice. That's. Good you know. For the, you. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You know the. Uh, I'm like slouching back here. I need to. You, oh. Posture. You know. There we go. How many albums do you have left in you? How many albums do you want to go for? As many um, as possible, as many as people want to hear. I'll say that until I until I'm not cool anymore. So we'll stop it too. Uh, I'm just <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> just trying to be honest with you. Yeah. How has your creative process changed from the beginning? Um, has anything changed in it? No, I've just gotten a little bit, just a little bit more confident in the in the music and the lyrics, especially that I, that I'm making. I used to really look for like assurance, like is this okay? Like and you know, but now. Like the record label, like really trust me to like you know do everything myself, which is super flattering. At first, it was it wasn't like that. I was you know finding myself. But confidence comes from finding yourself or finding different parts of yourself. 
you know, and you've done yeah, that. Yeah, and just just repetition, just doing it so many times. It's like practicing a, a song on piano. Last time you were here, I, or two times ago, I asked, do you know the formula for a hit song? Now, as you release, like, what mm-hmm. could be your next hit song, do you think you know the formula now? You know, where's the wood? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knock on some wood right now. Um, I don't know. I don't. The, the formula, it's not like math where it's set forever, but um, it changes within the times, like 10 years from now. Like the formula in 2010 was a big synthy chorus with like big, like, 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 like not a whole lot of chords. Like, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And then, uh, you know, in the EDM, like uh, the dawn, like 2012, it, then it became like, you know, the dubstep, like halftime, like, I knew you were trouble. I keep referencing Taylor Swift. But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, see, I told you. I knew it. Um, uh, so a lot of EDM influence. And now we're kind of like getting into the funky influence. And, you mm-hmm. know, I, I think music is going to speed up in 2020. We're going to get back <laughs> to like, because every time we touch, I can't Yo. So they, they, Y'all are doing mm-hmm. that right now. Cascade. Like, so, someone's going to make a song that is that fast, but doesn't feel, <clears throat> doesn't feel like that. And I know that's like kind of like hard to imagine. No, right I understand now. it. So the formula varies on, you know, it's, it's culture, it's people. Why um, do you think it's going to speed up? I don't know. I just think there's like when you look at the charts right now, like like this song I put out will be the one of the faster songs on, I think played on radio. It's like 111 and a half BPMs. Look at you. Mm-hmm. I just try. You just have to be a bit different. Um, but I don't. You know, there's no formula. Just make it dynamic and make it just a little different. Beautiful. Yeah. We've learned a lot in this conversation. Always do. Voice yeah. notes. Do we have a hard date on this? No hard date, but iTunes says expected January <laughs> 20th, I think. So we, have a, we have a soft date. January 20th. Soft date. Yeah. We have a minute, and are you going to release any more songs up until then? I think I will. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. Yes. Everyone's like, yes, very good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Mr. Pooth. Great. 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 Yes. Awesome. Um, we learned uh, about you and Allie Simpson. That was nice. <laughs> you are, we, are we recapping? Let's yeah. recap. Okay. You still go to church. That's great. Nice. You cool. like parks? I like parks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Um, yeah, we've learned a lot about you, my friend. Yeah. Okay. How long is, is it? Do you want people on the radio to say how long, or do you want the full title in there? I want the full title, but it's a mouthful. Uh, tell like, me what to say. Like, I really wanted. I, I initially wanted people to say, "This is new from Charlie Poot. This is how long has this been going on?" On blah 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 blah. But you know, this is uh, new from Charlie Poot. This is how long. On blah blah blah, it's just it's shorter. It is shorter, and we got we, we need to make time to play the music. Hopefully, people will say the entire title. I'll make sure Zach says the whole thing. Say the whole thing, Zach. Yeah. How long have this? How long has? Nope, this we're sticking with the short one. <laughs> we're sticking with the short one. See my point exactly. Thank you very much for. How long that. has this been going on? Yeah, I can sell that. You can sell that. Yeah, I could just say it's soft and sultry after midnight. That's like, mm. how long. Parentheses. Yeah. Has this been going on? <laughs> wow. Close. It's nice, like a nice, thick processing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You hear the gate? <laughs> <laughs> you hear the compression? How long has this been going on? That is the single right now. Do yourself a favor and listen to it truly. And uh, attention and how long has this been going on are connected. Excited for this album. Excited for the story. Thank you, bro. Thank you for continuing. Thank you. And in all seriousness, thank you for continuing to support your boy. Always. All of you. Always and forever. Charlie Puth, everybody. All Come right. on. Yes.